Hello and welcome. This video will review how to get some of the data out of a completed calculation. As you can see, our calculation on dichlorobenzene has completed. It only took it a minute and 12 seconds. Once it began, you can see when the calculation started. So all we got to do is click on the file name that will take us to the completed job. You can see the molecule here. You can if depending on your mouse pad, just like basically do a double click on it or a two finger tap to copy your image. Um, you can copy that maybe into an Excel spreadsheet or maybe a Word document that you're working with. If you're working in groups, you might want to set up a Google Sheet or a Google Doc to compare your results. But you can copy that image, you can save it as an image as well. You can use the little cursor arrow button to check some of the parameters of the molecule, maybe a bond length, maybe you want to check um, um, a dihedral angle. So you can check a dihedral angle by clicking the atoms, four atoms in a row. And that'll tell you the dihedral angle made by the two bonds. And so you can see that dihedral angle is zero. Um, and if you scroll down, you can see the numerical results. You could look at the um, the raw output. I don't really recommend that you go through the raw output. It's pretty, pretty uh, detailed. But you can see the calculation, basis set, optimization, frequency calculation, um, the uh, stoichiometry, the symmetry of the molecule. One thing of note is that if the molecule has a particular symmetry about it, the symmetry generally can't be broken. Um, so just be aware that if your molecule doesn't quite look like the way you expect, you might want to make it look closer to the expected structure. Um, you can see the RHF energy. This is our electronic energy. You can take the number, copy that over to an uh, Excel spreadsheet, again, or Word document, whatever have you. You can see the ZPE, the zero point energy, the conditions, 298K, um, standard atmospheric pressure to calculate the um, things like the internal energy, the enthalpy, the free energy of the molecule. So here we have the enthalpy at 298K, the free energy to 298K. Um, again, you can um, export those as needed. You see the heat capacity, entropy, these are the corrections that were used to determine the enthalpy and the free energy of the molecule. Um, we get the dipole moment, we can copy that as well um, of the molecule. And if you actually click the little button, it'll show you the dipole moment vector. So our dipole moment is bisecting the two carbon chlorine bonds. The, uh, um, we can then scroll back down. We can see the different steps of our geometry optimization. Um, some molecules may take more steps than five. This one's a relatively fast optimization. You may see some molecules take up to 40. Some jobs may crash if you run out of optimization steps. Some jobs may crash because you go over the one hour limit for the computation. If so, you'll usually see the word failed. On the job, we'll go through how to restart a failed job or how to investigate a failed job later. But um, if that's the case, um, it could be because of going over the... Um, the time limit of one hour for each calculation or um, exceeding the number of optimization steps. Some molecules that are bigger than others may have a, you know, take more geometry optimization steps to complete. And then you see um, some of the charges of the molecule, you get some of the rotational constants if you need that information, and then finally you get the vibrational modes. The primary thing to look for is to make sure these are all just ordinary numbers. If you see any of these um, that are negative or imaginary, that would mean that the molecule is actually not a local minimum on the potential energy surface. Um, and it just depends on what you're looking for. If you're studying transition states, you should find you know a maximum point would have one negative or imaginary frequency. Um, sometimes you get two that have, or even more, that have a negative value um, or truly or imaginary. If that's the case, um, then you have some sort of higher saddle point that's really not a, a meaningful point on the potential energy surface for that structure. So that helps you know what um, structures might be um, ignored in terms of their results. Okay, so one other thing you can do, you can um, sort of animate um, the vibrational modes. You could click one of these buttons here and kind of see um, what's behind that vibrational mode. You could also... Um, animated, I think that's this button here, it will show you the actual frequency in motion. Another thing you can do is actually look at the full IR spectrum or the full Raman spectrum. So you can see your IR spectrum here. You can see the Raman spectrum here. I don't think anybody proposed to do anything with Raman uh, spectroscopy, but you get that information from a typical geometry optimization.
calculation. And again, should be able to do a right click. You can save this as an image. I don't know if there's a simple way to get the data out in terms of um, this peak here, but you might play around and see. Um, um, you know, there might be some way to get this data out if you want to get this plot out and, and make graphs in Excel. So you can play around a bit with that if that's something you need to do. Okay, and interesting, interestingly, Gaussian calculations always end with some sort of a weird quote. So I don't know, that's just like their thing. So that's their calling card. So you'll see a quote at the very bottom of the screen. So that's how you analyze the results of a calculation using um, WebML and Gaussian.